Have you ever trained your dog some skill and thought, there's got to be an easier way to train that? If you have, you're going to enjoy what I've got for you today. It's perch work, pivots, and spins. I'm going to share with you how I train it for my own dogs and how I train my students' dogs as well. Hi, I'm Susan Garrett, multi-time world champion of dog agility, owner of Dogs That Training for Dogs, and creator of Shaped by Dog podcast. If you are listening to the podcast recently, podcast episode number 68 was all about three easy tricks that I think everyone should know. And during that podcast, I mentioned if you want me to demonstrate how I go about teaching perch work, pivots and spins, just let me know. And so many of you did that. That's why we're here today. You might be watching this video going, Susan, uh, I don't compete in agility or any sports. Why would I want to do that? I'm so glad you asked. This is a great exercise for people with pet dogs for two big reasons. Number one, it's a lovely addition to your regular daily routine to help with your dog's fitness level. I think even more important than that, this is a huge help for those of you who battle loose leash walking, getting your dog to walk beside you on leash. Trust me, it's going to get a whole lot easier after you use perch work, pivots, and spins. For those of you who are interested in training tricks, this would count towards one of your tricks for your uh, trick title. And obedience folk, I know what you do. You spend a lot of time doing pivots with your dog on left, but I gotta tell you, there's a big reason that you should be doing it with dog on right. I'm gonna share that one with you today. And of course, my fellow agility folk, this is one of the easiest and earliest exercises I teach my puppies. And that's why today I've got my six month old puppy here for demonstrations. I could have chose one of my adult dogs, but my puppy has just recently learned this. So what a better demo dog. Let's jump in. There's five easy steps, but before we get into those, I've got to tell you what the equipment that you're going to need. First of all, we need a perch. Boom. What is a perch? A perch could be a dog bowl. This one it would be ideal because it's got rubber on the top. Our dog's paws are going to go on there, so we want it to be no slip. This is just chunks of rubber, but you could make the same from a telephone book. As long as what you're using is either square or round, it can be used. And it should be appropriate for the size of dog. So if I had like a chihuahua, I might use something like this. I prefer that you wrap it in something like a yoga mat that makes it no slip. So there you have many choices of things that you can use for a perch. You want to also have a blanket on hand, and I will tell you why you're going to need a blanket. Now, obviously, you're also going to need rewards. And in episode number 59 of my podcast, I talked about how important it is to strategically use higher value rewards or medium or lower value rewards at key times. So you're going to need both for this training. And finally, you may need a target stick. So if you aren't familiar with what to do with a target stick, check it out right here on my YouTube channel. I had a two-part series on 10 easy ways that you can use a target for your dog training. A paw target was one of them, and also how to actually train the use of a target stick. So check that out, and then jump back here, and let's get into doing perch work. One final thing I forgot to mention. You need a toy a toy to get your dog started in the training and to use for balance breaks. Another good video you'll find here on my YouTube channel to check out. Really big part of my training. All right, so what treats do I have? I've got some medium level treats. This is just dried treats and some freeze dried liver. This is the really killer stuff. This is the A plus value and it's roast beef and it's tripe treats. So two bowls, two equal values or two different values, super high value medium value. All right, now let's jump in and look at what we're training today. There's five easy steps to what I'm going to teach you. Now, let's hear it for easy. If you like easy steps, go ahead and hit the like button on this video right now. Let's have a like for easy steps in dog training. The first thing we want to do is build value. And that is that the dog sees it and goes, holy crap, I'm in love with it. We want to build value. Then we're going to test the value, get our dogs to move their butt. We're going to do right into the pivots and spins, and then we're going to name the move. So let's jump right in. Level number one, we're building value. 
I'm gonna start with a blanket. And what I want you to do is just fold it up so it's a nice big target for the dog. We wanna set them up so that it's so easy for them to be right. They're gonna love playing this game, all right? If you haven't played the search game with me, I want you to start by doing that. You're gonna hold your dog by the collar, say search, toss a low value cookie, they grab it, you call their name, they come back and they get a higher value cookie from you. We're gonna just play the search game to begin this training right now. As with all training, we start with a toy. This break, get the ding, get the ding. This is a brand new toy. This is a toy from For My Merles. If you're looking, it's where we get all our toys from. For my merls. That's a good toy. This is a good toy. It's a good toy. And down. Get it. So this is just relationship building. Good dog training starts with building focus for you. And while she's tugging on that, I'm going to get my lower value cookie ready to throw. Thank you. Search. This, she comes back on the bed, I'm gonna give her a higher value cookie. Now you could click that her getting on the bed, but I don't wanna confuse the dogs that we want all four feet on, so I would just say nothing and give them their cookie. Search. Good. Search. So you're gonna say the word and throw it out. When the dog, good, comes back, you're gonna give them a much higher value reward. Search. And this time when she's out there, I'm gonna, Fold my blanket over, giving her uh, half the target that she had before. This, good. Search, I'm gonna fold it again. Good, search. Good, search. So you see I have a nice big square now. Good, good. So now I'll play my game. Get it. Super, super. And where my nice big square was before, I'm gonna put in the new perch. So I'm gonna start low to help my puppy be successful. Get this thing, get this thing. Even though she knows this, again, I have my lower value treats. I'm gonna throw out for my search. Higher value when she comes and steps up. This is where you can use a clicker when their paws come on this perch. Our goal is just to have their front paws, not their back ones, just their front ones. Thank you. Good. Okay, good. And now she's up there, I'm gonna say search. Throw the cookie. By throwing the cookie, we're helping her to reload and recognize that it's good to be up here. And I'll give her one or two extras just for standing there. Search, say the word, then throw the cookie. Good. Give her one or two extra. Now, do you see how she's cheating and she's looking for me to throw that way? Now I'm going to throw it the other way. Search, good. Good, good. Search. Good. You don't have to click twice. If you want to just give two cookies, you can. And one more time. Search. Good. Get that. Get that, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. So that is step one done. We've built value. When our dog goes out for their lower value cookie and they come back, they immediately step up on that perch. Now we're gonna move to step two, which is super quick step, and it's just testing what the dog understands. You ready for step two, young lady? Get it, let's do step two, let's do step two, get it. Step two, I'm gonna step away and see if she stays on there or if she brings her back feet up, okay? If she brings her back feet up, she's relying on my body to tell her where she should be. So step two, we're gonna do the same thing. Search, say the word, throw it out, and see if she comes to us. If she goes to the perch, then that's exactly what we want. Say the word, search, throw it out, and stand off to the side or stand back. And when she comes up there, she's telling you that you're testing me and I know what I should do. I shouldn't follow you. Now, if your dog follows you, and won't come up, come here, little. You can just step over and hold them here for a second, then say, ready? 
and let them go and let them tell you I find value and if they don't go back to step one and build more value higher rewards and search let them find that thing because that's like important they're gonna figure out good the my highest value rewards happen when my front feet come on there step two super easy but really important that we get our dogs to understand it's your front feet alone don't try to put your back feet up there all right we're ready to move on to move that butt all right we're getting our dog to move the butt there's three ways you can do it the first one thank you is once they get up there you're no longer going to click just for them getting up. What you're going to click is any movement of their back feet. And you just gently step towards them. And when they move their feet, you're going to click. And then step the other way. And then step that way. And our goal is to get our dogs to step all the way around. So you can stop feeding them right in front. When you step, you for, you for sure want to keep one leg there. Good. There you go. So you want to keep one leg there, but eventually you're going to feed them in front. Do you see how that brings her butt all the way around? That's going from a pivot to a spin. Now the other thing you could do, you could just lure your dog with a cookie all the way around. That might work. I'm not a big fan of luring. So what I would recommend you do rather than lure, use a target stick, remember? There's a video here, right here on my YouTube channel, how to use a target stick. So this is going to be my target end. And all I'm going to do is get her to touch that. And you're going to use your target stick a couple times. And then you're just going to click and reward if she moves on her own. Let's get her going in the other direction. No, nope, this way. Here we go. So her feet came off. We want to keep those feet on there. Good. Better target for me good old fashioned wooden spoon is a better target. I got my clicker built scotch taped right to it. Okay, so good. So what we want to do is just get our, get our dog doing this on their own. So there's two behaviors we're working on right now. One is the spin on their own so that they will go in a circle. Good. And the other is just the pivot. The pivot into uh, what I call reinforcement zone at her side. So she's up there. I want her to come all the way back so she's in reinforcement zone. And this is exactly where we want them to walk, right? When we take our dogs for a walk. So I'm going to move, break, and, and get her to come around the other way by me just coming to the other side of the perch. So that is growing the movement to an actual pivot where the dog comes straight in beside you, okay? So that's the pivot. And when your dog's doing it super great, you can move on to step number five, which is name it. And all that I'm gonna do, uh, and I want her on this side, this is close, and at this side, this is side. I haven't even used these with her, but let's try it, okay? You get back here, You're, I'll get my clicker ready. So uh, what I'm gonna do, can you sit? I'm gonna start by getting her to go into side position, by me moving, so she's almost there, and I'm going to say side, and that doesn't mean anything to her, but she, she knows I've said something, sit. So she's going to try to move her closest place, side, <laughs> this sir, side, good. And I'm just gonna click any movement, all right? You can try and move a little bit more this time, sit, side, Good. Okay. And the other side, the same thing. I'm going to come close. Sit. This her. Sit. And she only has to move a little bit. Close. Good. All right. Now, if your dog doesn't offer that movement on their own, what you can do is, remember, you can um, use your target stick. I'm going to give the cue for side. This is a big one. Side. You can help them by moving yourself, all right? Now, for dogs, she's got her feet on there. This is going to be brilliant for your loose leash walking. For those of you who are doing competition obedience, who tend to only do it on this side, number one reason why I'd recommend you do both is we get balance in our dogs. We don't always want them looking up on the left because they're going to get overdeveloped neck on one side. Can you sit? The other reason is, in obedience, 
break, you can nap it up in there, in your bed. When you're doing competition obedience and you have to do something called an about turn, there's a point where your dog's head is in heel position, but their butt is back here. They have to catch all the way up. So them being able to pivot their butt in that direction away from your body is valuable. What most obedience people do is they just do pivots where the dog's butt's coming in towards them. But in order to get them driving the rear end on an about turn and not be left behind the motion, you want to get them pivoting on the right as well. Two pivots. Okay, so a final little test. So a little test of value is we can now stand in reinforcement zone. I'm gonna do this so you guys can see it. I'm gonna stand with the perch in reinforcement zone. I'm gonna give my dog a release cue and a search. Search. And will she come and stop in reinforcement zone? Good. And then I can ask her to sit. Good. So those of you, again, who are doing loose leash walking, walking your dog, I hope that's everybody watching, search. This is a great opportunity for the dog to rehearse over and over again. There's value here. When I'm walking down the street, I don't need to be out in front. There's value here. This is where I, exactly where I want to be. And I would then go to the step of adding your dog's leash and collar so that they rehearse being here is a great place to be when I'm on leash and collar. It's going to make walking outside a game changer for you. Okay, just to review, five simple steps. Build the value, test the value, move the butt, pivots, do some pivots, do some spins, and name them side and close for your pivots. You could just say spin for the dog going around the, the, pit, the perch, if you like. All of that simple, and it's a it's just a great fitness exercise for your dog. You can see my puppy is kind of wiped out just by doing a little bit here. If you found value in this and you would like to hear more or learn more, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button so you're, you'll know when we're going to publish another a training video. And leave me a comment. Let me know if there was anything new that you learned in watching how to train pivots and, and spins this way. Also, let me know if there's a topic you'd like to see me cover in the future. That's it. We'll see you next time here on Dogs That slash Shape by Dog.